Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're at Exodus chapter 12, a pivotal chapter in the book of Exodus, and today verses 23 through 28. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall observe this right. And when your children say to you, what does this right mean to you? You shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but spared our homes. And the people bowed low and worshipped. Then the sons of Israel went and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. I want you to notice here that while God sends the death angel, God also protects his people from the death angel once they've done their part that he has instructed them to do. So actually, every head of every household, that person's instructed to mark the door with the blood. The door must be marked with the blood of an actual sacrifice, and somebody has to slay that sacrifice. And as we've already pointed out, the one to slay it is the male of the household. Who did the sacrificing? Always, always throughout the Bible, you'll find the sacrifice is always done by the male leader of the household. It's done by the men of Israel. And I'm talking to some of us here, some of us are men in Israel today, and some of us haven't been very good spiritual leaders in our homes. God's calling us up higher. If we had lived in that time, you and I would have been called to sacrifice that animal. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot here to be done to get this uh, going, the the sacrifice and, and all the pieces we're reading about here on the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread also. But there was a lot to be done. The animal had to be sacrificed. The blood had to be applied to the doorpost. The, the meal had to be cooked and prepared. Everybody in the family has something to do. And notice this line, the most important line I have for you this morning. None of this is meritorious, yet all of this is required. <laughs> I'll say it again. None of this is meritorious. This doesn't earn their salvation. And yet all of this is conditional. It's all required. You have to do this. If you're going to be protected from the death angel, this has to be done. If it had been Passover that night and the, the male leader of the household just told his family, hey, don't worry about it, everybody. We're under grace. Everything's going to be fine. Go to bed. You know, he'd have had dead people in his home in the morning. Now, there's another piece here that's important also. Did you notice that the observance of this uh, Right, this memorial, the Passover, and these things that we've talked about these last few days, this is to be continuous, continuous. In fact, it's explicitly stated that when, when they enter into the promised land, when they actually arrive in Israel, this isn't to be discontinued. This is to continue to happen. Now, it, it sort of goes without saying, of course, the New Testament, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So when we come to the shadow caster, Jesus, the, the actual sacrifice, Yes, of course, this has changed, it's transformed, and as Christians today, we observe the communion. So this rite that we're talking about of the Passover and the associated pieces, we still are dealing with some of this. We're still called to address some of this today, not to keep Passover literally, but as it's transformed by the Bible, we are to continue to observe and remember this. This is part of our heritage. We're the continuation of God's people, therefore the sacrifice is our heritage now. Now there's also pointing here to the children uh, retelling the story, re reliving, re-experiencing the Passover. So it is. So this can be transmitted from generation to generation. And the story retold and retold and retold, because again, it's our story. It's our story today as Christians. This isn't something that's a story of some strange desert people a long time ago. This is our story now. If you don't think this is your story, you're, you're messed up. Finally, in the last verse here, there's a, a very explicit lesson a lesson of explicit obedience. I'll read it to you again. Then the sons of Israel went and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. That's telling us a story of explicit obedience. The claim here is that all these instructions we've been going through day by day, these were all carried out very carefully by the Hebrews. Some people today kind of frown on these kind of detailed or explicit obedience, and they say, well, oh no, it's the theme that ma matters, everything else doesn't matter, you guys are being too legalistic. Well, what's interesting here is that in the Bible, God commands, in this very verse 28, God commands 
their explicit obedience. He is the Lord. We are the people of his covenant. He sets out the parameters and we say yes. Anything else is, is somewhat less than true faith in Yahweh. All right, the Lord bless you and we'll see you tomorrow.